Over the years, some men have made baldness their trademark and have proven that having no hair can be cool. But not everyone agrees. Australian medical student Zach is only in his early 20s, so losing his hair is not something he's thrilled about. The hair is not really coarse here, you can see it's just medium fine. But when you look back with the wet hair, you might hear turn around here. This is going to progress. Because he's very young, the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. To have this sort of surgery in Australia is triple, quadruple the amount of money. And from what I can tell in Googling, uh, I think Dr. Damkern is probably better than most of the people in Australia, or all of them. Um, I've been to Thailand a lot, and my aunties work here as well, so I trust the Thai people a lot. And yeah, I think I'm going to get uh, the best of the surgery here. Rather than search for options in his home country, Zach contacted the team at Bodyline Patient Care, who specialise in bringing patients from Australia to Thailand for a wide range of medical and cosmetic treatments. Bodyline service is popular because patients have no waiting in line for specialists, lower costs, access to the best doctors and can have a holiday while recuperating. Bodyline brought Zach here to the DHT Hair Clinic in the heart of Bangkok, whose founder, Dr. Dan Kung, is regarded as one of the world's leaders in hair transplant and was a pioneer in bringing state-of-the-art hair restoration surgery to Thailand. You would never know, he was once bald too. What you, we usually do, you know, number one, you know, we examine the patient and we staging the patient that, you know, what classification that he has, you can see the male pattern baldness starting from normal and when he's getting all to stage six, seven, you know, it's completely bald. One we diagnosis and uh, we searching for the downy hair and we think that he's a good candidate for hair transplantation. We were selecting the hair. It is a permanent hair. If the patient have classic the hair in the top part, usually the gene, you mean the control, the top part, this is going to go as time goes by. If we have the gene bonus from the father's side and the mother's side. But when you see over 90% of the time, the men maintain like a horseshoe hair in the back, the one we obtain the donor hair from the back part. Uh -huh. so what you we take call the, the hair permanent hair here. on the back part. And you, you can see most men will be balding and yes. from here up to almost the crown. So most of the doctor we take in the center. It is, we, we thought it could be permanent hair. Okay. And when you do a procedure like this, is it one time only or does the patient it's, need to come? It's, it's depend on, you know, how intensive the ball net is. If the patient have receding minimally, as in early male button ball is like a class 3, class 4, many doctors can do it in one pass. But if you have intensive baldness, the balding area is too big, you know, multiple sessions require. And uh, the time it takes to actually do that is quite a few hours, isn't it? Yes, it is. Depending on how many grafting we want to do. If we do a three down graft, we take about seven hours. We got four down graft, about eight, nine hours. We got five down, we just keep increasing. And very intense work for you. Very intense work. Actually. We do one by one, you one know, hair each at follicle. A time. We don't call one hair, we, we call one follicle. Each follicle contain between one, maybe two, maybe three. And one, so I got four or five hair. The majority be two hair graft. And the patient um, will see the results sort of straight away? No, we grafting, we don't use this long hair, we use this really short hair because a few doctors in the world practice doing a, a long hair graft because when you've got a long hair graft, the patient is able to see immediately saw how he looked when the hair started to grow. But if you've got a long hair, it'd be easy for the hair to come out, you know, dealing post op care. Majority of doctors, I think over 99% are doing a short hair graft. The hair continue to grow about three, four weeks and then start to shed. And the hair growing out again, you know, about four months on average, more or less. Yeah. And to get the result, you know, maybe one, one and a half years, look the best. Then it was time for Zach to decide on how much hair was to be transplanted from the back of his head to the top. In terms of confidence, no. Um, 
I feel generally pretty good about myself all the time. I guess I guess I'm the only person in my family that has hair loss, and I used to have really good hair, and then all of a sudden I hit 20 and it just went away. I used to be that person who was like, "Oh, you have really cool hair," and then it died. And so for the last few years, I've been sort of looking at different ways to do that. And I guess I'm 25 years old, and I would like to think that I can stay looking <laughs> younger as, as long as possible. Not that that's really a, a huge issue for me, but um, for, for the price you can pay in Thailand, it's definitely, I think, a smart, uh, smart option. Dr. Dan Kohn says studies are underway around the world to clone hair, and one day baldness will be more easily corrected. But for now, you can recover your youthful scalp slowly but surely, one hair at a time.